Jimmy, this week you uh, you got into areas on Twitter that a lot of athletes wouldn't. You, know, you kind of let some personal opinions out. Do you think that's something you know, that athletes are held back too much on doing? You, know, you like actually expressing yourself more like that? Well, I, I don't feel like I'm held back. There's no one telling me what to do or not to do. I just don't think that we get outside of many topics in our media centers, media gatherings. It's really just racing related. So, um, you know, it's amazing how hot of a button politics are. And uh, certainly a lot of people agreeing with my opinion and a lot of people against. And, you know, that's, that's why we have the government we do today and the freedoms we do is because we can all have an opinion. So, um, but clearly we've got a ton going on in D.C. that needs to get straightened up. And every time a headline is released, it's just it's more discouraging the status of our economy and our country and, and uh, hopefully we can turn things around. Yep. Jimmy, you seem pretty upset at Montoya after New Hampshire. Are you still upset and how are you going to race Montoya forward? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely upset and uh, what it really boils down to is I, I don't feel that at least two of the three things that have happened are intentional. Um, they, were, they were racing instances, but there's a point where you know, you've You've got to respect the people you're racing around, and also respect the uh, a driver that you may have had some run-ins with. And and Juan and I have a, a friendship, and we get along great. But after you know three times me getting turned around and, and hearing apologies, I'm tired of hearing apologies. I just I don't want the contact, and I don't want to be raced that way. Um, we can do it different parts of the race, but for whatever reason, towards the end of the event, I found myself spun around, and uh, certainly have had my fair share and. and can't happen again. Diego, you gonna talk to him or is something you gotta settle on the time? Um, we, he and I have always talked about things in the past, so I have not heard from him since uh, since New Hampshire. And it's not like he drove in there and ran me over. I mean, he just there's there's a, a flow at, at Loudon and how you drive that uh, put me in a bad position and got me turned around. And uh, it's we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about it. I mean, we always do. And I've, I've been in my motorhome at Darlington when he spun me out there. I'm in my motorhome showering, and he walked into my bus and to my shower to apologize. So, it, and then he told me I'm naked, and I said, well, of course I'm. I'm in the shower. So, you know, there's, there's times where um, you can understand, but after three times of being turned around and, and hearing I'm sorry, it's just can't happen. Right here. It's a tight race at the top of the standings right now. Well, I mean, the obvious strengths are uh, we see when the team's running well on, on a weekly basis, but I really look back at the tough times that, that the 99 team and the Roush organization have been through year, you know, in the last year or so and, and how they stuck together as a team and came through that. Um, there's a lot to be said about that, and um, I feel that they can face adversity. And when you get into the chase, uh, it's very rare to have all 10 races go your way. I don't even know if it's ever happened before. Um, so to be able to overcome adversity and stick together as a team is a really important uh, asset to have or quality that you need to be a champion. And they've proven that they can do that through some really tough times over a long period of time. So I find that to be their most dangerous uh, asset or attribute. What do you think Pittsburgh's challenge will be going forward? I don't know. I mean, I... I don't know what they're dealing with, where they're where they are with their cars, but the uh, the pressure of a championship does weird things to everyone, and uh, I would have to say that you know it's even something I, I have to face. Even though we've won the last five, it's a, it's a new year, new set of challenges, and that pressure that takes place from I guess Chicago now on those final ten, it's a different world. I mean everything's fine. This first twenty six, yeah, we're leading the points, winning races, things are well. But that pressure cooker starts um, in September, and we'll just see how everybody responds. Can we kind of follow that up? There's a lot of guys contending this year. The points are tied. A lot of winners. What do you contribute that to this season? Where does that come from? I personally think that it's because the rule book has stayed the same for a long period of time. Many time there are rule changes, the uh, <clears throat> the big teams have a chance to find speed first, and then there's a separation and a gap, and uh, you know some guys that dominate. The rules have stayed very similar for a long period of time, and it's allowed everyone to close up, and we have great parity, um, frustrating parity. I'm sure from a fan standpoint at times, and certainly from a driver's standpoint, um, you know it's all the cars are running the same speed, which looks great on paper, but on the racetrack you can't pass. So. 
Um, I'm hopeful there's a rule change, and we have a chance to go chase that next chunk of speed and, and try to beat everybody to it. Man, I don't know. Maybe a Le Mans style start. Let's make it make it different. Hi, Carl. It really sucks to be running second. To be honest with you. <laughs> How's it feel to be leading the points? It feels great. <laughs> Nothing bad about it. <laughs> Final question right here. I think so. The shifting, um, I, I felt like it gave us something to do. Here, we're shifting. Using second. <laughs> no, at Pocono. Carl, for those on TV watching, Carl Edwards is here. Um, you want to come and give an appearance, a little wave? What's that? Yeah, here. So, oh, is this live? at, at some live. point, somewhere it's live. What's so, up? he's been asking me questions, and then, thank you. There we go. <laughs> so shifting at Pocono. Um, I thought it was a good thing. I, I don't know if, how it looked on television, what people thought of the racing, but again, as competitors, you want to have a chance to work on your equipment and try to find something before other people do. So there was a few gear ratios to try. I allowed you to shift to different points in the different straightaways, and that brought an element of something new and, and an area to to work in for us. So from an engineering standpoint, a team standpoint, I like that side of it and uh, felt like it, it was better. What are the keys to winning there? Boy, keys to winning there. Um, I think first thing that comes to mind is fuel mileage. Um, and it's it's uh, one or the other. You either have a really fast car and poor fuel mileage <laughs> or uh, not running so good and roll the dice and stay out and, and uh, save some fuel and, and take those two strategies. So uh, I would much rather have the better driving race car and hope that it's just a fight to the finish. Jimmy, thanks a lot. Good luck this weekend at the Brickyard. Cool.